With the Corridor Productivity Pack from CTC, you have access to a whole fleet of advanced stub assemblies to take your corridor modeling to the next level. Some of the main features include things like custom coding to be able to turn off vertical links between lanes and curbs, or the ability for the calculation of base materials between sidewalks and boulevards to all be sorted out for you in, in cross-section view. If we take a look at a few of the sub-assemblies that come with this, we'll see some of those features. Starting off with the multi-layer lane, if we take a look at this in our assembly view, we can see the properties of one of these multi-layer lanes. To start out with, we have full control over the number of lifts. I have set to two right now. I can change that to one and see that reflected in my sub-assembly as well as in my cross-section. We have full control over the links and the points and the shape codes available in the sub-assembly. This allows us to quantify things to the amount we need and also gives us detailed control over, again, vertical links. So for example, right now, these are two separate sub-assemblies between my lane and my curb right now. The reason I can turn those off and that I don't see those here is because in this sub-assembly I have set these, these outer vertical links to off. But if we set those to something else, we'll see that those links come back in our section view. So it's this custom coding that gives us full control over the display of our cross-sections. Moving down the list, there's a multi-layer lane that will link to a marked point. This is the same as the multi-layer lane subassembly, with all the same options for coding, customization, with the one addition, or the exception, that it looks for a marked point. So this handles median situations like this right here and allow us to model a divided roadway. And as we toggle through that corridor, you'll see that median float varying in slope and in width. There are some DOT specific subassemblies, namely the MnDOT curb and, and MnDOT curb with sidewalk subassemblies. If I take a look at those over here, we'll take one peek at that in our subassembly. I have a lot of control over curb type, for example. I have D curb or V curb or the typical B curb. I can choose whether or not sidewalk should be in control included in this subassembly. If I turn that back on, I can also decide whether or not the common area behind the curb should be calculated. That's an area that can be quantified as well. It wouldn't have to be shown in cross sections, but we can quantify that for a common fill area. I have control over the length of the gutter, or the width of the gutter rather. If it's B624, perhaps it's B612. All those options are available here in intuitive parameters. I have a couple sidewalk sub-assemblies available as well. What these allow us to do, for example, on this side, this sub-assembly here will allow us to tar target the right-of-way and then have the sub-assembly build backwards. And in this way, we get, we get our inside boulevard to fluctuate, and it's all built in one sub-assembly. So if I move along in my section editor again, we'll see that outside boulevard float and that's all based on one sub-assembly. So that boulevard right here floats in and out as dictated by the right-of-way. So this might be good for matching into the face of a building or a fixed elevation right-of-way out here where we want to hold the width and slope of outside boulevard and the sidewalk, but we want the inside to fluctuate. This is typically handled in a very difficult way using many different sub-assemblies, including link to mark point and mark point, all just to accomplish a sidewalk and two simple boulevards. The parameters available on this are simple targeting and then again a lot of custom coding available as well. There's also a standard sidewalk boulevard which behaves much more like a standard sub-assembly where you target from the inside or towards center line out the exception of the right-of-way one is it first connects to the right-of-way and then builds backwards. 
Beyond that, we have a fleet of the most common generic subassemblies available in the software with the addition of full custom coding. So if I take a look at link slope to surface, this is a standard daylight subassembly. It gives me controls on cut slope and fill slope and depth, but also full control on my coding as well. This again helps with quantification and control over the view of my sections. Please look at the descriptions and help files below. You'll see a lot more detailed information on each and every one of these subassemblies and the three different versions of CPP that are available. There is the MinDot version, the Imperial version, and the Metric version.